This video covers using the apatome to take a fluorescent image that has a very thin depth of field. If you're not already familiar with best practices for fluorescent imaging, check out that video first and then come back here. It's easier to show than it is to explain what the apatome does. This is a wide field image that I've taken. This is the same field of view, but taken using the apatome. You can see how all of the out-of-focus light around these cells has been removed, and it's much easier to clearly see the cell structures. Once again, here's the wide field image, and here's the same image taken using the apatome. Here's how this works. Assuming you've purchased an apatome and the associated module to use it in MBF's software, begin by pushing the apatome into the light path. You'll hear a beep. That indicates it's been recognized. Once the apatome is in your light path, go to the live image and choose the DABI channel. You'll see these grids or lines moving up and down across your image. Those are the grids from the apatome. We need to change just a couple settings here. First, I'll go to the quick launch and type in apatome. This will bring up the apatome setup dialog box. Next, we'll need to enable the apatome in the multi-channel control window. I'll click on setup, and then from the presets, I'll choose 63x apatome. You can also manually select the current objective that you're using and the apatome device command sequence from here as needed. Once you've selected your channels, click on them and then optimize them as you normally would. There's one very important difference between apatome imaging and wide field imaging, however, and that's the camera histogram. When you're doing wide field imaging, you'll often cut down the dynamic range of your camera by clicking and dragging the white point slider like this. When you're dealing with the apatome, that process is already done for you. That is, once the apatome has acquired an image, it will automatically click optimize. So this image and this one and this one will all give you identical output images once you've acquired them with the apatome. While the white point slider won't have any impact on your resulting image, that doesn't mean it's not useful. It's still a great way to get a good preview without having an exposure time that's too high. Let's optimize these channels without using the white point slider. That looks good for Dappy. And now I'll set up DS Red. I'd like to keep the exposure time below 250 and preferably below 200 milliseconds if I can. Remember that your settings are only saved when you click on a different channel, so once you've done the red channel, click on the blue channel again to save those settings. Now we can acquire an image. Apatome acquires take just slightly longer than regular wide field acquires to acquire. That's because the apatome is taking more than one image, depending on the quality setting that you've selected. If you have Fast Acquire selected, the apatome will take three different images with the grid in three different positions and then use the grid lines to remove out of focus light. Good is five images, better is seven, and best is nine. Once you've acquired your apatome image, hopefully it will look good, but if not, there are two common problems that we see with apatome images. The first of those is a grainy image, like this one shown here. Grainy images are nearly always caused by a narrow histogram in the preview before we acquired the image. Let's go back to live image and then click on the DS red channel and now let's adjust the exposure time increasing it until there's a little bit more range here in the camera histogram. I'll check the DAPI channel to make sure the settings look good there and then I'll reacquire this image. Just by increasing the dynamic range of the red channel I've taken this image from looking like this to looking like this, much better. Another problem that we often see is grid lines in the tissue like this. Now, those can result from many things, but one of the more common ones is the grid lines, or the shadow of the grid lines, being bleached into the tissue. This option, SABC, is Spatially Adaptive Bleaching Correction. Turn it on and set it to medium, and that will perform a software correction that kind of smooths out and makes the dark areas brighter and the brighter areas darker, and makes the image look a lot more even and clean. I enabled SABC, and I reacquired this image, and it looks a lot better now.
here's before, and here's after. Aggressive artifact removal goes a step further than SABC. In almost all cases, we recommend leaving it off. Both grainy images and grid lines in the images can have many causes. If you've already enabled SABC and you're sure you have a good broad dynamic range in your histogram, give us a call and we'll help you go through the grid focus or grid phase calibration. It's generally better not to do these on your own, as they shouldn't ever have to be done. One final option that's worth discussing is the grid insert option. On the Apatome 1, grids were physical pieces that you had to take in and put out of the Apatome. With the Apatome 2, they're all always in the Apatome, and you can switch between them easily just by using this slider right here. You'll hear a beep when you select the different grids, and you'll see the size of the lines on your screen change. These three grids remove different amounts of light. There are objective recommendations. It says to use grid L with 10x, grid M when you're at medium magnification, and grid H when you're up at 63 or 100x. But those aren't hard and fast rules. Grid L removes the most light from your resulting image, grid M removes an intermediate amount, and grid H removes the least. So there's nothing wrong with using grid M, for example, at 63x to take an image that has thinner depth of field than grid H would normally give you. I've acquired three images, one with each of the different grids. Here's grid H first. Now here's grid M. See how more of the out-of-focus light has been removed and the overall effect is to darken the image? Now here's grid L removing the most light. For comparison, here's grid H, and grid L one more time. There isn't a best or correct grid to use. Which one you pick is all up to you and depends on your project. Of course, you can use the Avatome with any other feature in the software, from image stacks to scanned slides, any place you need a thinner depth of field. Once you're finished using the Avatome, be sure to remove it from the light path by sliding it out there's a notch that it will fit into. Don't remove it too far, and don't take it all the way out of the microscope. 